One of the things I've always wondered about is, is there a great difference in terms of audio quality when you go up to one of the pro field recorders, like a Sound Devices 744T, versus these more consumer grade recorders, like the Tascam DR60D Mark II or the Zoom H6? Let's have a listen. Now, what we're going to do here is listen to three clips, and in each case, we're going to be recording with the Audio-Technica 4053B. That'll be routed into the various recorders, and I will be reading a paragraph from Rick Veer's book, The Location Sound Bible, which, by the way, is a fantastic book if you haven't read it before. I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun to read, first of all, because he has a great sense of humor, but also, and more importantly, because he has a lot of great practical knowledge and information and experience about recording sound on location. The word boom is often mistaken for a type of microphone, but there's technically no such thing as a boom mic. Instead, the term boom refers to the pole or rig to which the microphone is attached. The types of mics that are used at the end of the boom pole are shotguns and cardioids. While shotguns and cardioids produce the most natural sounding dialogue tracks, they both have advantages and disadvantages. The word boom is often mistaken for a type of microphone, but there's technically no such thing as a boom mic. Instead, the term boom refers to the pole or rig to which the microphone is attached. The types of mics that are used at the end of a boom pole are shotguns and cardioids. While shotguns and cardioids produce the most natural sounding dialogue tracks, they both have advantages and disadvantages. The word boom is often mistaken for a type of microphone, but there's technically no such thing as a boom mic. Instead, the term boom refers to the pole or rig to which the microphone is attached. The types of mics that are used on the end of a boom pole are shotguns and cardioids. While shotguns and cardioids produce the most natural sounding dialogue tracks, they both have advantages and disadvantages. Now, first of all, I realize this is not a fair comparison, and that is not my point at all. I'm not trying to convince you or anybody or myself that I need to own a $4,500 professional field recorder to make anything of any worth. That's clearly not my purpose here. My question really is, is over the years, as these recorders like Tascam and Zoom, as they've gotten better and better, how do they now compare quality-wise, just in terms of audio quality, relative to the professional recorders like Sound Devices, Zaxcom, and these others that are far more expensive that the pros are using. So what we're gonna do here is just a sound quality comparison. Now, the three devices that we're going to compare are first of all, the Tascam DR60D Mark II, which I've talked about a ton on this channel. If you're not familiar with it, go ahead and check out our review on that. And this was a device that came out in 2014. It's actually a revision, it's a Mark II version. And it is a pretty good device. It runs about $200 US. Sometimes you can find it for a little bit less. The second device is the Zoom H6. Now, this is a device, thanks to our friends over at B&H, we were able to evaluate for a few weeks here. And I was actually quite impressed with this device. I'll have a separate review of this over on my website at learnlightandsound.com. Be sure to go ahead and check that out if you're interested in that. But this device came out in 2013 and it has four inputs. You can also add a couple of additional inputs if you get a mic module that has that. It is a fantastic recorder and runs about $400 US. Now, one of the devices I used on a gig that I did once was a Sound Devices 744T. This is a field recorder with four mic inputs. It runs about $4,400. It is a, it's a great piece of kit. I loved using it. It was a lot of fun to use. Um, and it sounds really good. However, I don't have one of those. And <laughs> I don't have any friends that had one I could borrow either. However, again, because of our friends over at BH, we were able to borrow a Sound Devices USB Pre 2. Now, you can ask yourself, well, that's, a, that's an audio interface, isn't it? It's not really a field recorder. Well, yes, that's true. However, it does have the exact same preamps and the exact same analog to digital converters as a 7 series field recorders from sound devices. So this is a proxy for those devices. These, these sound exactly the same, or this USB Pre 2 sounds exactly the same as the sound devices, seven series field recorder. So let's go ahead and listen to a few of these and see how they compare. The word boom is often mistaken for a type of microphone, but there's technically no such thing as a boom mic. Instead, the term boom refers to the pole or rig to which the microphone is attached. The types of mics that are used at the end of the boom pole are shotguns and cardioids. While shotguns and cardioids produce the most natural sounding dialogue tracks, they both have advantages and disadvantages. The word boom is often mistaken for a type of microphone, but there's technically no such thing as a boom mic. Instead, the term boom refers to the pole or rig to which the microphone is attached. 
The types of mics that are used at the end of a boom pole are shotguns and cardioids. While shotguns and cardioids produce the most natural sounding dialogue tracks, they both have advantages and disadvantages. The word boom is often mistaken for a type of microphone, but there's technically no such thing as a boom mic. Instead, the term boom refers to the pole or rig to which the microphone is attached. The types of mics that are used on the end of a boom pole are shotguns and cardioids. While shotguns and cardioids produce the most natural sounding dialogue tracks, they both have advantages and disadvantages. Now there are a lot of other factors behind the dip price differences here, and I, and again, I'm not trying to suggest that anyone should not buy <laughs> uh, one of these less expensive devices, or that anyone should buy, you know, should not buy one of the more expensive devices. For pros, there are a lot of features in the field recorders in the pro level that aren't in these consumer grade. The build quality is hugely different for starters. The metering is hugely different, and you wouldn't think that would make a difference or that big of a difference, but it really does. When you have a 20 segment meter versus a four or six segment meter, it makes a huge difference. You can tell so much better exactly where you're at and whether you need to pull your levels back or, or maybe even push them a little bit. So those are some differences. The powering options are so much better on the pro level devices. You have so many, a much more robust set of options in terms of how to power the device for long periods of time. There are a lot of routing options as well, being able to get the information or the sound out of the device either over to a professional level camera or off to a mixing board or you know lots or, or background mixing board lots of different routing options a lot of flexibility there that you're not going to generally find on these less expensive recorders question could you hear a difference i can hear a little bit of a difference is it a night and day difference it didn't really seem like a night and day difference to me each of them had a practical noise floor right around minus 60 which is the target i shoot for try to get there or even lower but minus 60 is fantastic for each of those it's really impressive that a $180 to $200 recorder can pretty much sound pretty close to a sound devices field recorder. There are lots of reasons to go ahead and do whatever project you're doing, even though you don't have a really expensive field recorder. If you've got a $200 Tascam DR60D Mark II, you're in pretty good shape. Be sure to check out our website, learnlightandsound.com, to see reviews of the Zoom H6 and the sound devices USB Pre 2 over the next few days. Thanks again for checking out this episode. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video.